Okay, in section 4.2, we're going to talk about a couple of concepts uh, that uh, we're not familiar with the terminology, but we are familiar with the concepts behind these terms. First of these is the null space of a matrix. We say the null space of an M by N matrix A, written uh, as null A, is the set of all solutions to the homogeneous equation AX equals zero. Okay, so null A is simply a set of all X such that X is in Rn and AX equals zero. Okay. Uh, X has to be in Rn because if A is an M by N matrix um, and we want to be able to multiply A times X, then there must be an entry in X for every column of A and so X must be from Rn. So null A is simply the set of all solutions to AX equals zero. The fact that we're calling it the null space uh, probably gives you a clue that it's a subspace, and indeed it is. The theorem here says the null space of an M by N matrix is a subspace of Rn. Uh, let's look at this matrix A given here um, to generate an explicit description of null A we have to solve AX equals zero. Right? An explicit description means you can look at it and, and generate a, an entry in null A. Okay, so to do that we have to solve AX equals zero. Um, so we throw that into an augmented matrix and do a couple of row operations uh, giving us the matrix given here. So we see the general solution uh, is X1 equals 6X2 plus 2X4 and x3 equals negative x4, and x2 and x4 are free variables. If we put it in parametric vector form, uh, we have uh, x1 is 6x2 plus 2x4, x2 is just x2, and so forth. So notice that any vector in the null space of A is a linear combination of these two vectors given here. So if we put those, uh, uh, if we look at those, we can say uh, any vector in the null space of A is in the span of those two vectors. Um, and uh, if you remember the theorem from section 4.1, it said that if you can write your set as the span of a finite set of vectors, then it's automatically a subspace of that apparent vector space. So here we've written uh, for this particular matrix A, we've written a set of solutions to AX equals zero as the span of these two vectors, so therefore the null space of A is a subspace of R4. The second concept uh, that uh, we're going to talk about here in, in this section is the column space of a matrix. And once again, it's new terminology, but not new fundamental material here. So the column space of an M by N matrix A, which we write as call A, is the set of all linear combinations of the columns of A. All, right? all linear combinations of the columns of A. Um, we know that to be the span of the columns of A. All right? So if A is equal to A1 through AN, the column space of A is just the span of A1 through AN. Um, and uh, since we've, uh, the definition here is that uh, column space of A is the span of a set of vectors, so it too is a subspace of uh, some vector space. Uh, in this case, if A is M by N, then the column space is going to be in RM because uh, when you take a linear combination of, of vectors with M components, you're going to get another vector with M components. So the column space of A is in RM. Another way to look at the column space of A is to write it as a set of all B such that B is equal to A times X for some X in RN. Because when you multiply A times X you're simply taking a linear combination of the columns of A. Um, here's a set S. Um, defined in terms of this generic vector and uh, you're asked to find a matrix A such that S is equal to the column space of A. So uh, we simply take that generic vector, write it in parametric vector form, 
So we can write anything in S as a linear combination of these three vectors given here. Um, so if we put those vectors into a matrix, and then we can say that um, anything in S is a linear combination of the columns of A. And so um, S is equal to the column space of A. Um, as I said before, the null space of A and the column space of A are simply new terms for describing entities with which we are already familiar. Null A is just the set of all solutions to AX equals zero. Right? That dates back to like section 1.3, 1.4, or somewhere back there. Um, a column space of A is just the set of all linear combinations of the columns, uh, or uh, the span of the column. So again, we're going back to fundamental uh, information that we learned in chapter one. Okay, so um, if we have a matrix A, how do we determine if a particular vector X is in the null space of that matrix? Well, go back to the definition. Null space of A is a set of all vectors satisfying AX equals zero. So we just need to multiply A times X and see if we get zero. Um, again, um, to multiply A times X, um, we're taking a linear combination of the columns of A, so there needs to be a, a component of X that corresponds to each column of A. There are N columns in A, so we need N elements in the null space of A. So null A is in Rn. Okay, so here's a vector, and we're asked, is this in the null space of the given matrix? So we simply multiply uh, the matrix times this vector, um, so that we're taking a linear combination of the columns here, and uh, uh, go through the arithmetic, and we end up with a zero vector. So the answer is yes, it is in the null space of A, because A times X is equal to zero here. All right. Uh, what if we have a, a matrix A and another vector, and we want to know if that vector is in the column space of the matrix? So again, look at the definition. Uh, B is in the column space of A if AX equals B is consistent. So we need to solve a system to determine if uh, B is in the column space of A. And again, um, uh, the column space of A is going to be a subset of Rm because we're taking linear combinations of uh, vectors with M components and so we get another vector with M components. Alright, so here's a vector and we want to know if it's in the column space of A for the given matrix A. So we need to solve the system, uh, all right, set up the augmented matrix solve the system. So I've done that, left out the uh, specifics, the row operations, but we end up with this matrix here. And so the question is, is does this correspond to a consistent system? And the answer is yes, because we have no rows, zero, 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 something not zero. Uh, the fact that we have a row of all zeros is really irrelevant. The fact that we have free variable is irrelevant. The only thing that's relevant is that we don't have a row that's 0, 0, 0, not 0, because that would tell us it's inconsistent. So since the system is consistent, that means that this vector is indeed in the column space of A. All right, let's look at this uh, example. Here's the set W, and uh, we're asked, is it a subspace of R4? Um, so we can write it, uh, write any generic element of W as the linear combination of these two vectors. So we, we write it in parametric vector form. And so we can say that W is equal to column space of this matrix. Just taking these two vectors, sticking them in the columns of a matrix. Uh, the column space of this matrix uh, uh, is all linear combinations of these columns, which is exactly W. So that means that W is a subspace. All right, um, how about this example? Um, this one, um, uh, it's not uh, so easy uh, or so clear to see because um, we, uh, we have this constant term one here and so we can't write this 
set as a linear combination of vectors. Um, so in this case we have to go back to the definition of subspace. That's those three properties that every subspace must um, satisfy. So first one was does, does it contain the zero vector? And uh, if we look, uh, for it to contain the zero vector, clearly D uh, has to be zero, uh, which would mean that the second component would be two times zero plus one, which is one. And so if, if you get zero here, you're going to have one up here. And therefore, the, the zero vector is not in this set. So it is not a subspace of R4. Um, about this set, uh, is this set a subspace of R4? So we've got all vectors A, B, C, D that satisfy these two equations. Um, there's actually two ways we could go about doing this uh, using what we've learned uh, in this section. One is easier than the other. Uh, let's take the, uh, the hard way first. Uh, and uh, we're going to try to write S as uh, the column space of some matrix A. So we need to figure out what A would be. Um, we're going to simplify things a little bit. Um, instead of C here, we're just going to substitute A plus 3B. And then instead of D, we're going to substitute A plus B plus C, but we're going to plug in what C is uh, since, since we've gotten rid of C. So D uh, is uh, B plus C plus A, and C is A plus 3B, so we plug that in for C, and we end up with D equals 2A plus 4B. So uh, we can write any vector in S in this form, so we replace C with A plus 3B and D with 2A plus 4B. And then it's just a matter of uh, writing that uh, in parametric vector form, and throwing those columns into a matrix, and so S is equal to the column space of uh, A, where A is given here, and uh, thus S would be a subspace of R4, since the column space of any matrix is a subspace. Now the other way to look at it, so re I rewrote the problem here, the other way to look at it is uh, to note that we could write S in this form. So basically, I've taken these two equations that uh, we have here, and I've uh, taken all the, the variables over to the left side, and, and so we've got zeros on the right. And so when you see zeros on the right, you should think, hmm, that's a homogeneous system. Um, and um, so we can write S as the null space of A, where A is equal to the coefficient matrix from this system of equations. So you see 1, 3, negative 1 uh, for A, B, C, and then 0 for D, and from the first equation. And then the second equation we get 1 times A plus 1 times B plus 1 times C minus 1 times D. So that's where the second row comes from. So remember what the null space of a matrix is. It's just the set of all solutions to AX equals 0. And uh, so I've just taken this system of equations, written it, uh, uh, or taken these equations, written them as a homogeneous system, and then I can use the fact that uh, the null space of a matrix is always a subspace, and we're done. So that's why I said one was uh, harder than the other. This is clearly the easiest way. All right. Um, Let's uh, revisit the concept of linear transformations for just a bit. Um, and this is again back to chapter one, um, uh, where we talked about linear transformations. Um, one uh, new term that we didn't learn back in chapter one was the idea of the kernel of a linear transformation. And the kernel of a linear transformation is simply the set of all vectors that map to the zero vector. So uh, the kernel of a linear transformation is exactly the null space, the null space of the matrix that defines the transformation. So the kernel and null space are uh, analogous concepts. Uh, the range of a transformation 
is a set of all vectors um, that get mapped to. So the range is in the codomain. Okay, sometimes it's all of the codomain, sometimes not. But it's it's the range is a set of all vectors that get mapped to by some vector from the domain. Um, and so um, the uh, the range of uh, T is actually the column space of A, where A is the transformation of uh, the matrix that defines the transformation. So the kernel of the transformation is the null space of A. The range of the transformation is the column space of A. Okay, um, last I want to talk about just um, a, the, looking at the contrast between the null space of a matrix and the column space. Um, these really, on the surface, uh, are very different sets. Uh, we will kind of pull them together a little bit later on in this chapter, but for right now, they're really very different sets, and they don't um, uh, uh, share um, they share analogous sorts of ideas. But um, but that's kind of the extent of it at this point. So let's assume A is an M by N matrix. Then the null space is in R N. Column space is in R M. The null space is implicitly defined. That means you, you're given a condition that vectors in the null space must satisfy, but you can't look at a matrix A and know uh, which vectors are in it. Uh, you have to solve that system AX equals zero. On the other hand, the column space of A is explicitly defined, right? Because it's just uh, the set of all linear combinations of the columns. So you can look at the matrix A and you know. Uh, um, that the columns that you're looking at are actually in the column space and you know how to create more entries in the column space. All right, to find vectors in the null space requires work. You have to solve the system AX equals zero. Um, note, however, that the zero vector is always in the null space of A, right? because A times the zero vector gives you the zero vector. Um, to find vectors in the column space of A, you just compute linear combinations of the columns. So it's a direct um, process to do that. Uh, there's no obvious relationship between null A and the entries in A. On the other hand, uh, the relationship between A and the column space of A is obvious since each column is in the column space. The typical vector V in the null space satisfies A times V equals zero. Typical vector in the column space um, has the property that AX equals V is consistent. Okay, so in, for null space, um, you're multiplying A times V uh, to see if you get zero. To see if a vector's in the column space, you're solving a system AX equals V. So V is on the right-hand side in that case. Given a specific vector v, it's easy to determine if v is in the null space. You just see if a times v is equal to zero. Um, to determine if v is in the column space, you have to solve a system of equations. All right, um, the null space equals only the zero vector um, if and only if ax equals zero has only the trivial solution. Okay, so how do you get what's in the null space? We have to solve ax equals zero. And if you get only the trivial solution, then that means there's only one solution, which is a zero vector. The column space of A is equal to Rm if and only if Ax equals B is consistent for every B in Rm. Right? That means that everything, uh, no matter what you put on the right-hand side, uh, the system will be consistent. So every B is a linear combination of the columns of A. And then relating it to uh, linear transformations, the null space of A is equal to the zero vector only if and only if uh, the transformation x to ax is one to one. So if you back up to the previous one, uh, we had uh, that uh, null A is equal to only the zero vector if ax equals zero has only the trivial solution. And remember, that's going to occur um, when you have no free variables and uh, or if there's a pivot position in every column, and so we know that indicates that, that the transformation is one-to-one. -one. 
and then the column space is equal to rm if and only if uh, ax equals b is consistent for every b so that means every b in the codomain gets mapped to so the transformation must be on to rm